Hey there, StarCraft fans, it's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remaster. Today it's going to be an incredible PvZ featuring Snow and Larva here on Polypoid. Bottom right, it is our Protoss player, it is Snow, red today, and on the bottom left he is blue, it is our Zerg player, Larva. So two incredible fan favorites here, duking it out for you on Polypoid. It's another RJB replay, but you probably already knew that. Check him out on his YouTube channel. If you want to know the address, let me know. But if you've been watching me for the last couple of years or so, then you already know about it. Right, right. Okay, so, a PVZ here on Polypoid. I've been watching ASL, the round of 16 for ASL 17. It is incredible. We've got Bisu in there. We've got Soul Key. We've got Barracks versus Mini on Apocalypse, which is an incredible, incredible game. It makes me wish that I could get ASL replays. Man, that was so incredible. Just go ahead and check it out on Afrika's Esports YouTube channel. The round of 16 for ASL 17, all right? All right, so this is a four-player map. So I feel like, hmm, let's roll the dice here and say it's going to be a gateway opening here from Snow. Yes, indeed, he likes Zealot Pressure. He knows how good it is and looks like it's going to be an overpool opening or a hatch first from Larva. Yeah, hatch first. Mr. Drone, how do you feel to be selected to make a hatchery for Larva? Honored. Yes, I feel the same way. Terry the Overlord, <laughs> scout in the correct direction here on Polypoid. Well done, Terry. Alright, what's the play going to be here? Well, it's a Hatcheroonie. There's your pool. No gas yet, which means we're not going to do any kind of an early speedling flood here. We do want some links to defend against early Zealots, which are very likely against Snow. Larva knows who he's playing against. That Bidot Snow name is incredibly used. Like, not, I was going to say overused, but just very frequently used. And the drone's trying to be like, no, there's nothing over this way. Zap, zap. Well, that's less of a zap and more of like a spit, huh? It's once again, they call them spines. I just feel like we're spitting. I guess we're spitting spines. For both of it to be a thing here. Anyway, what's the play? Well, Zealots are out. Hoofing it. Robert the Zealot. If you're a big Robert the Zealot fan, there's merch at falcopaladin.store with him on it. He is a very cool looking dude with that long braid down his back there. Connection to the Kala. And still no gas. So three sets of lings on the way just to deal with the early, early Zealot stuff. What is the Zealot doing? Oh, interesting. He's checking for a very fast third base from Snow, like a sub three minute third, or maybe just waiting for a drone to come up here and get a third base. Ah, oh, tosses it down here instead. And there's another Zealot right on top of that. Try to shut that thing down. One Zealot, not quite enough to kill this thing. Two Zealots, yes though. And here come the lings. There are eight of them. Eight to deal with these zealots. It's four per. Did he get a surround? No. Man, I was almost like, it's a Christmas miracle. It's a surround on a zealot. Both zealots go down, but another zealot shows up, and the links are like, ah, we need four more zealot or links to take down another zealot. And th this, is, this is not working. This is not working. Cut. Chow. Yeah, Zealot's like, I'm out of here. Let's, hey, brother, help me out real quick. Yeah, man, Zealots are slippery bros. They always are. They always will be. He doesn't get the four kills that he wanted there, but three is honestly pretty good. So this is where we get a forge and we get a cannon and we say, mm -hmm. just, you know, just in case 20 lings show up here. We'll have a cannon to pick them off from back behind this wall. Nexus warping in from the Protoss player. Third base is taking some hits and is bleeding, but is otherwise okay. Finally, some gas on the way with a Hydralisk then coming in. All right. So this might be an attempted Hydro Bus opening here out of Larva. Snow is no stranger to this. He has died to this. He has survived this. He has won after this. It just really comes down to a matter of when is that storm going to be ready? When will Speedlings be ready? Speedlings, speed zealots be ready because that's the question of the day, isn't it? 
question of the day is, do you have speed lots? Do you have storm? If you do, the hiders are in a lot of trouble. Hiders are good, but they do have their weaknesses. And one of those things is these guys with rockets on their boots. Or I don't know, these guys after leg day. You know how this works. Once again, not enough link to deal with two zealots. And now there are, just popping out. Oh my gosh. One kill, one kill. Again, having to run here. Metabolic boost not getting researched. We are instead going for Hydra speed. Okay, someone's got to kill this guy, right? Like, two more hits and he's dead. But hits are hard to come by. There we go. Gets the two. This guy makes it to safety. Cannon saves his butt. What is this probe doing? This probe is scouting. Good scouting, pro, but your time is over. Excellent work. Catching the Hydra den, catching the lack of a lair, saying, okay... So this is not going to be a Spire. This is definitely Hydra opening here. So more cannons, please. More cannons without a doubt. Here goes the Stargate. Overlord is able to scout the Stargate. Great job by Terry. Seeing what's going on back here. I mean, what else do we expect other than Stargate as the opening in this matchup, right? You can go for a DT rush, which is kind of fun, honestly. But a little bit hard to pull off without Corsairs clearing the skies for you, you know? All right. So Dragoon going to chase Terry out. Terry will make it. I don't know. But the Hydras... Side to try to take down a cannon while getting smacked in the face. They coast, so they get a cannon, but what is that? Like four Hydras dead. And there's another cannon to back it up. And there's two more cannons warping in. And this Overlord makes it to the high ground. Wow, a 7 HP. And the high ground Dragoon getting some shots off here too. So the aggression is real. Range upgrade on the follow-up here from Larva. And trying to get to a position where you can hit something without taking shots and Larva having a hard time finding that sweet spot. He's just going to wait for group spines to finish. He knows it'll be here by about seven minutes. Not too worried about it. Corsair is out, but guess what? It was a Hydra Den first. So good luck finding any overlords to kill, but hey, scouting's nice. And there is that range upgrade. Kicking in and this gateway is going to die. I was trying to make a zealot, but no more. This forge, honestly, the next target. Speed is not on the way for these zealots, man. Not even close. What the heck is going on? How is he expecting to do with these Hydras without a Citadel? Oh my gosh, Snow is skipping Citadel. Snow is skipping it. There, no, just kidding. Getting Citadel now. I guess just counting on all of these cannons to keep him alive, but uh, these are not going to be speed lots. No storm is going to be here for at least three or four minutes. This is not ideal. This is a little bit intense, I think, for Snow fans. The Hydras are not going after the Forge. I guess this one's not even bothering with upgrades. Because this is the safe one. This one's going for the plus one attack. Corsair hunting an Overlord. Hang on, hang on. And no, unfortunately not able to get enough shots off to kill it. It's, you know, a Corsair's life when it is a Hydralisk opening for the Zerg. Very terrible stuff. A fourth base is done from Larva 2. All right, man. Larva looking good. Speed lots are on the way. I wonder if this is just... Snow just getting out of here because he expects speed lots to be faster. He expects Storm to be faster, and it's not. It just simply isn't. Like, speed's not anywhere near done here at 830. The Templar Archives is not halfway done warping in, which means speed is forever away. Or speed. Storm is forever away. I know how to do S words. Haha. <laughs> But look at these, these hiders are just like, la, 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 la. we're just defending our overlords against this one Corsair. That's our entire goal in life. I really feel like he was expecting these zealots to have speed more quickly. And he's just backing off because he feels like they're going to jump out on him. But uh, still no, still slow, but it is a lot of zealots, man. I mean, this is five gates. All we've been doing today is making zealots. Got to kill his own cannon to get out here, but it's a ton of zealots. And they're going to have plus one, and they're going to have leg enhancements pretty quickly. See, these hiders are like, wait, you don't have legs? What? How did... What? That's very strange. There's a lot of you, though. I mean, look, Snow's not going to forget about legs. Larva anticipates that, yes, legs will be here. These will be problematic. And everybody's going to be sad once the speed lots are here and we don't have any lurkers or anything. No sunkens either, mind you. Heaven forbid Larva invest anything in a static defense when there are 8,000 speed lots out on the map. So, I don't know. I don't see this going particularly well for Larva. He's going to try to utilize this high ground position, which is nice, but he can only do so much. Okay. Well, there's a lot of Hydralisks, though. 
To be fair, to be fair, it is a lot of Hydralisks since Snow's like, yeah, I thought I had a lot of Zealots. Never mind. I got High Templar back here, but Storm isn't done yet. We're in two minutes and there's no Storm. Or ten minutes and there's no Storm yet. Yeah, once again, doesn't want to fight against a bunch of speed lots with cannon support and probably some Storm support too. Oh my gosh. Overlord alive. Yes, the regen of health saved that Overlord. This Corsair got several hits off. But it's not going to be a lot of Corsairs today, obviously. Snow just made the command decision that, hmm, this is a whole bunch of Hydralisks. Let's not try to make Corsairs work here. We can deal with Scourge. But Ooh, look at the surround attempt here by these speed lots with the plus one attack. No upgrades for these Hydras. No attack, no armor. And I mean, this is, I don't know, is anybody surprised by this? No, speed lots are incredible against Hydras. More Hydras popping out here, trying to make good trades. Are these Hydralisks at the very least? Hard to do. But dude, Snow's on two bases. This is a four basing larva at 45 drones. Making 10 more Hydras at a time, getting Lurker Aspect. And this one Corsair that Snow has built today has two kills and is continuing to scout around. He says, you getting a Hive? No, any Spire? No, great, wonderful. Keep that going. Hydras going for the flank attack here on Snow. This is great. Storm is done though, so the Hydra's job is a little bit more difficult. But at the very least, they've delayed this third base that Snow is trying to get up. So we'll see how Snow does here. Ah, more Storm. What is the problem today? Well, it's Hydralisks. Okay, Storm. What is the problem today? Well, it's Zerglings. Okay, Storm, right? What is the problem today? Lurkers. Ah, yes, the answer, of course, is Storm in this situation. I'm very smart. Yeah, so Snow knows. Snow knows. Trying to go for another bit of a flank here. So Storm to the bottom side, Storm to the top side. Snow judiciously spreading the available Storm. But uh, Dragoons are dying. Reinforcing Hunters coming in. Reinforcing Dragoons coming in here too. I don't know. This is very touch and go. The Zealots are actually putting in some serious work because of course they are. And Snow secures his third position. There we go. That's how this thing rocks. That's how this rocks. That's what it's all about. All right. Well, we've got our Hydralisks running around with plus one attack now, at least. They're working on plus two attack. Archon, splash damage. Hydras. Man, that Archon on front. Dealing some damage, dying pretty quick here too. It's a pretty tough, tough battle here for both sides. It is very difficult for either Larva to get in here or Snow to just fully get the Zerg out, you know, out of here. 46 drones, no more drones being produced. Get an amulet on the way from the Protoss, always a great upgrade. This Corsair just kind of making scouting loops at this stage of the game, right? Comes back around, says, okay, there's no Hive, there's no Spire. This is just Hydra Lurker for all time right now, which you know is not Falcon's favorite thing, but it's Larva. I find it really, really difficult to be like, yes, well, Larva's screwing up here, even though just there's a timer on this, right? If you can win this thing in the next, I'd say, six minutes with Hydra Lurker, great. If you can't win this thing in the next six minutes and you don't have a Defiler mound, you're just going to die. The Protoss upgrades are going to scale. The Protoss capability of building Reavers is going to come into play here. It's just going to be really difficult for any, any Zerg player to do this against Snow, even though you are Larva, right? So Lurkers and Hydras burrowing. These guys are out on a scouting mission. Corsair, once again, is just here to keep an eye on things and not die because there's a lot of Hydras. Yeah, High Templar defending this third base, as they do. Fourth base coming up down south. A bit of a naked expand. Oh, Corsair. Hero Corsair. 5 HP has three kills now. Supply blocking Larva. That was sick. This Corsair has put in so much work today. No, don't come up the ramp. Don't come up the ramp. Don't come up the ramp. Yeah, Larva's like, hmm, not coming up the ramp. But I will get a fifth base up the top left. If you're going to get a fourth base, I'm absolutely getting a fifth right now. Yeah, Snow's pretty quickly gone from two bases to four, which is a good skill to have if you're a Protoss. Queen's Nest on the way from Larva. He recognizes that this game's going to go on a little bit longer than I would have liked it to. I would have liked to be able to win with Hydro Lurker, but Storm is out. Yeah. Zealots are here. The Dragoons are here. 
Hydras are good, but we need some help. We need some defiler support. That's usually entirely how this works. Okay, so at this point, I'm just kind of waiting for Defilers to get out here. I'm not sure that Snow is interested in pushing necessarily. He's pretty happy being on four bases. His gateway count is wondrous. It is beyond wonderful here. Metabolic boost is on the way. And there is a Spire coming in with a Hive. So this time, he says, hey, it's a Hive and a Spire. And the Corsair's like, oh, okay, good information. Let's go. Let's relay that back to the homeland. I love that we're getting Metabolic Boost at 15 minutes. It's been so Hydro Lurker, but now he's like, now I need Adrenalings. So let's make sure they have speed. When the high finishes, we'll get them Adrenal, and we'll call it good. So this stage of the game, things are going all right. If you're enjoying it so far, this has been a pretty good defense by Snow. It's pretty good macroing up here. I think these Overlords are just for scouting purposes, just kind of park them out in different places, but um, also no. Also, no. Okay, well, these are slow lings with zero zero upgrades, but with the support of Sunkins and Lurkers, all things are possible for these Hurtlings. There's Adrenal getting fired up here at 16 minutes right after the high finishes. But yeah, if you're enjoying this, hit the like button. Click it, tap it, whatever you have to do, and subscribe. I'm trying to get up to 100,000 subscribers in 20 24, and we're making some good progress thus far, I gotta say. So, to final round on the way, Snow's like, alright, so I haven't seen any Dark Swarms or Plagues yet. So, maybe there's a bit of a window where I can get stuff done. Because, yeah, these Lurkers, not as good without Dark Swarm on them. Anytime these Dragoons can be involved in taking down Lurkers, the Lurkers feel really bad about it, because that should not be happening. There should be Defilers out. But, once again, Zerg player kind of got stuck a little bit on this Lurker Hydra tech, expecting it to be better than it was. Snow expanding right side, and this is just going to be a bloodbath from this point on, right? It's a lot of Zerg, but it's hard to get good trades. Yeah, these zero zero lings rolling in. It's very cute. It's very cute. And they did kill a single Dragoon. That's nice, but that was like 20 Zerglings for pretty much nothing. Yeah, and uh, he's like, I guess I'll come into this little kill zone down here then. But it's really not a problem. I guess Adrenal's done, so these are officially 0-0 zero, zero Adrenalings now. So they're a little bit better. Nothing incredible, though. More late. And now see how the Lings have much more confidence and much more uh, this damaging ability in there. Adrenal may be the best upgrade in the game. It's right up there with Stim, right? Because Stim improves speed and damage output, but also takes some health. It only lasts for a little bit. I don't know. Well, that's what medics are for, right? So it's 142 to 119 supply. Snow is up. He's got a ton of gateways, man. He is just pumping Zealot so hard right now. It's consumed Ben Research. I know that a Filer Mound is done. There it is. Not sure if consume is done. Nice Hydra uh, Lurker block. Lurker egg block on this ramp. Nidus Canal is up. Is the other side of the Nidus Canal ready to go? Because uh, if it's not, where's the other Nidus Canal? Here? No. Here? No. Here? No. I don't think he has a second end of that Nidus, you guys. Seems bad. He turns all these hiders into lurkers because he knows they're going to die. And hey, lurkers have some value anyway. No, but really, is this just a falcon is blind kind of a thing? There has to be another end to this Nidus Canal. I mean, there doesn't have to be. You choose where to plant the other end, but okay, fine. A couple lurkers trying to morph behind this mineral line at this fourth base up the right side from snow. A lot of hiders coming in here too. This is tricky. Hiders are like, ah, your cannons cannot stop us. We have plus two attack now. But the zealots are like, yes, we can. We can totally stop you. More zealots flooding in. More hydras flooding in. Defiler, not quite sure what to do. Because Defiler doesn't have plague yet. So he just dies. And then the lurkers uh, try to burrow in. Because the lurkers... Uh, the cannons are gone. Oh, okay, never mind. They just straight up died. Never mind. Snow shuts that thing down big time. Storms, dragoons. 
No Dark Swarm to protect. The Zealots don't care about your Dark Swarm anyway. Mm, he's still here. I like that Larva's double expanding, though. Expanding here and expanding. And has already expanded here at the 12 o'clock, actually. That's a lot of fun. Very fun. So 61 drones here for Larva. About where you want to be. 60 to 70 workers is about where you want to be as a Zerg player, ideally in a game like this. Where you have a gajillion bases. Any more than that is probably too much. 65 is kind of a sweet spot that every Protoss player fears. When they see somebody like Larva with 65 workers, they say, well, that's it. Then they turn off the video and they stop watching. But you should not do that. This is snow we're talking about, guys. This is snow. This is maybe the best Protoss player in the world right now. I'd love to see him win an ASL. Just to validate everybody's thoughts about him, you know? Okay, continuing to defend here. Snow moving out. Plague up. Okay, that's the first plague of the day, which gives Falcon the right to say, Plague! -oo! And 189 to 138 supply. I mean, look, Zerg players, sometimes you look at that number and go, that seems problematic, but Zerg has plague and dark swarm now. Right? If this was just Hydro Lurker, I'd be like, okay. Well, everything's going poorly at this point for the Zerg player. Probably gonna die. Zealots Archons doing all sorts of great stuff here. Uh, cracklings, man. They're only getting better from here. They already have two, two. My goodness. Goodness to gracious. That is not great. Storm. As always, if you're struggling with Adrenalings in the late game here as a Protoss player, you just get more Storm. I know. I know it's simplistic. I know it's tough. But we're, yes. Reaver Archon drop. Top left. Remember how there were 65 drones? No. Not anymore. There are 57. Does this... I think this Nidus has another end somewhere. I think it has one. Where is there a dead... This is freaking me out, man. I guess it's gone now. But if it, one dies, the other end dies too, right? So... I don't know. Whatever. Top left base in trouble. Snow just kind of being like, ah, you want to send units up there? Good luck. Ah, Archon down. Connecting no uh, jukes! The jukes no goes down, but the reaver unloads and says, I'm gonna take all you with me. One last hit! Oh, three more hiders, four hiders go down. That final hit of the reaver getting his revenge. Fantastic. Alright, man. Zealots Archons doing what they can. High Templar, Reavers in the mix. Snow expanding up this right side, too. Just continuing to expand. If we split the map in half, that's good for Protoss, and Snow knows that. Yeah, man. I mean, Snow's just been a bit of a monster here, engaging with bases. Yeah. Engaging, engaging with bases here. And then just kind of cutting off reinforcements too. There's just not enough Zerg. Nice plague there though, catching a large group of Zealots, but man, the Hydra and Wing bodies littering this battlefield. Absolutely bonkers. Snow warping in top right, that's it. 
I mean, we do have these minerals only bases here. If this game goes on long enough, these will be important. For now, not so much, but every base with the gas has been taken or is being taken currently. And it's a, it's a split in half situation here for Larva. He needs to start killing bases. That's it. That's where he is. He either, either needs to take this base and this base somehow, or he needs to wipe out this top right corner, but it's being defended by cannons and reavers and all sorts of crazy stuff here, man. Reaver shot from downtown. God, I mean, that is technically a basketball reference. Nice storm drop. Oh, oh, still 69 drones after the storm drop, though, from Larva. He's doing all right. There's a high Templar in that shuttle. Not anymore. Yeah. Uh, you know what? That might have been a good thing. Might have been a good thing that uh, those drones died. Because Larva might have been at like 80 drones, 80 plus drones. That was a lot of drones that died at that 12 o'clock base. Snow's just playing this perfectly, y'all. He is just splitting the map in half. Keeping Larva on his toes. Storm dropping. Reaver dropping. Just trying to keep Larva's army out of position and keep Larva anywhere but over here, right? Keep him over on this side of the map. Keep him from getting over this direction. Make him worry about defending more than he can worry about getting nice plague dark swarm attacks on these expansions, you know? Oh, man. Back up to 72 workers. I mean, this is basically Larva being like, no, I want 70 plus workers, Falcon. It's fine. Plague Oh, uh, Defiler guy? Defiler guy! Alright. Well, that's not cool. Oh, ha where? Where do these come from? My gosh. Only two kills, but Zealot. Good luck, man. These are three, two Zealots. Okay, the Hydras do show up. And this Nidus Canal is connected to something. It's got to be over here. It is. Okay, so this Nidus is here. There we go. So they pop out up top left. Nidus is, man, S-tier building, man. Nice play. Reaver hits big time, though. Plagues are good, but snow, I, I just, I keep having to remind myself, these battles out here don't matter as much, as long as snow continues to have these bases, and continues to not just get absolutely wrecked, like he can't lose his entire army here to something, I guess he's using drops, Larva is, he says, you don't have any high templar at this base, so we're gonna drop lurkers, we're gonna, oh my gosh, but zealots and Storm and everything is here. Reavers joining the party. It's an absolute bloodbath. The Zealots are protected from the Hydras, but not from the Adrenaline Storm. Nice connections. And what's even left here? Two Hydralisks? There's a Reaver, though. The Hydras are like, blah! <laughs> that guy just joined the party. And he's dead. So, good attempt to wipe this base out. The Nexus was barely scratched. 60 probes to 68 drones. Ay, ay, ay. Snow heading north. I just, I cannot, cannot say that this is going very well for Larva right now. I know he has 68 drones. I appreciate this. Looking at being like, Lings are a big time problem for me. What if the spawning pool was dead? All right, neat. Well, let's pick up and get out of here. I don't know. This Archon's doing great. He's got 11 kills. Ah, oh, the Reaver died before the shuttle could pick it up. This Archon's still kind of kicking butt, though. 15 kill Archon? He might actually cancel this Carapace upgrade, too. No way. I love how the Ling gets in and the Archon's like, hold on. Blah. Okay, hailing on. Blah, blah. Great. You guys, yep, just keep funneling Lings to me. I'd love to increase my kill count. He's like, uh, maybe the Spire. Sure, we'll get the Spire. Look at this guy go! This is a 21 kill Archon who just killed a Spire, a spawning pool. He just denied a Carapace upgrade on an evolution chamber. And because the AI didn't tell him to go any... Oh, he's going to die now. But by golly, 26 kills on that Archon. Not too shabby. Not even close to shabby. That was great. Look at him go. All right. So that's annoying. Uh, new spawning pool is finishing somewhere. We throw it up top left. We put it in the natural. Yeah, we put it in the natural along with the new spire. Storm drop. Yeah, man. Snow is just putting on a absolute clinic of how to keep Larva down. It's 71 probes to 59 drones. 
absolutely insanely, insanely impressive stuff. Yeah, I just, I'm gonna put some money here on snow. I'm gonna put like five bucks on snow because everything is going according to plan. It's like, I don't really need to kill bases at this point. I just need to have half the map. Keep the economy low for larva. Not get it completely overrun. And I think I'm good. I really do. And we're adding DTs into the late game because it's Larva. And he didn't bring any overlords with him. And these DTs are kind of like, la, 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 la. just carving everything up here. A little bit of storm too. Larva's probably like, wait, why did this go so bad for us? Oh, massive Hydra drop top left though. Okay, so this, this is the thing, man. Wow! This is exactly what Larva needed to do in order to try and win this game. He snipes the top right. Gets down an assimilator. This pylon is dead. The gateway is almost dead. We've got Zealots and Archons trying to save this base. But these are plus three Hydralisks, man. The damage output is through the roof here. Sniping on that Archon easy and the gateway goes down. No buildings in the top right here. The Hydralisks say my job is done. And that's the story. Alright, man. Upgrade Scarab damage upgrade coming in here, too. I mean, this is just Ling Hydra stuff. So, it'd be better if Larva was able to take that top right base. Dude, these DTs are still in here. Just getting three hits off, man. The only thing that made those DTs less effective during that last attack was that Lurker Spines were accidentally hitting them. Oh, Overlord showed up. Hold on. Well, I mean, good attempt, damn the Dark Templar and friends. That was pretty cool stuff. So killing this Nexus is a symbolic maneuver. Doesn't matter. This is entirely mined out. Snow is okay with that. So the Lurkers continue to be at plus two Carapace, I think because this Evolution Chamber died. Not that there aren't other... Oh, this Evolution Chamber is just finishing the upgrade, so they will have plus three now. I don't know about trying to bust into the natural. Like, I respect the idea of going after the production. Like, that's what I would do, but in the number of games that we've seen that are PBZs, it's not necessarily required here, you know? Archon Snipe. Nope, oh, tried to lurker drop up here, but this was adequately defended by snow. Holy smokes. Was it ever adequately defended? Uh, supply blocked here so far. Oh, good sniper. Yeah, this is pretty non-stop. I gotta say, RJB recommending this today was... Pretty spot on, man. It's snow, though. It is snow. It is Larva. Did we expect anything beyond excellence here today? No. We did not. We never did. We never will. There's Larva says the answer is speedlings and lurkers. So he fires up ten lurks. Base cut in half. Snow's recovered the top right base. He's at 61 probes, at 61 two drones. Okay, Plague Up, that means this is easier. This is reminding me of many PBZs that I've cast. A few very special PBZs that I've cast. With this base is a target of much Zerg harassment and attack, and the Protoss just holds and holds and holds and holds. And all it takes for the Zerg is to get through one of these times, and they win the game. But the Protoss has also had games where they have just held this indefinitely against oncoming swarms all the day. Oh, these Reavers, man. Plus attack. He's trying to get a bit of a flank. Okay, I like the idea of a flank here from Larva quite a bit. These Lurkers burrowing would be nice, but they're not doing that. There we go. Now they burrow in range of a cannon. Okay, they got a couple probes. Did force the evac of probes there. Ling's jumping on top of an Archon, but the... 
Re 19 kill and 10 kill Reavers remains protected by Archons and Cannons and High Templar and Dragoons and more Archons. So this, yeah, this is reminding me, I don't know, was it Soul Key? I want to say it was Soul Key in Snow, maybe. On this map, I'm just having major deja vu to this base being of utmost importance late game PvZ, right? Where this represents the income advantage that you need to defeat somebody like Larva. And Snow just holding it and holding it and holding it. Snow's maxed out. Larva's at 149 supply. Well, can I take down this space? Maybe. Like, that's one High Templar. He's got enough energy for three friggin' storms. But, I don't know. A Dark Swarm negates all these cannons. He's trying to get... Okay, no. No, this is not happening. Yeah, all the Archons. Plague, ooh, catching some good stuff there. Catching some worthless stuff like the Archons. Good snipe on a Defiler. Every Defiler that dies, every High Templar that dies represents a lot for both of these players. <gasps> this is insane. Like, this is really, really impressive stuff today out of both of these players. I think Snow has it, though. Like, I don't want to cast or curse it. I don't want to say it's over at the 36-minute mark when it's not over. Like, we're looking at this game. And nope. Um, a lurker did manage to make it back here. <laughs> then he gets stormed and obliterated immediately. All right, Larva is setting up for a massive attack on this base. But look at the Archon count here. Holy Hannah. I mean, the High Templar and the Reavers are going to have to be a big part of this engagement. The Archon, like, Mass Archon's not going to win this alone. There you go. Unloading the Reavers. Ooh, did the Obs get sniped? Sure seems like the Obs got sniped, huh? Because as soon as that happens, Snow had to fall back a little bit. But you can see where the spines are coming from. You can storm those lurkers when they're underground. And then Larva going for a big drop. There's a High Templar here. He has enough energy for two storms. This guy has a storm, too. So there's one storm. Two storms. Three storms. That's it. That's it for storms. Cannons cannot stand against these Adrenalings. And, I, I mean, I would focus the Nexus here if I were these Lings. Yeah, they do. They jump on the Nexus. And uh, that thing is going to die. There's no saving it here, I'm afraid. That damage output is way too high. Then Larva takes advantage of the Chaos to move directly into this high ground mineral base that has been such a point of distraction here and attack here for both of these players. But, once again, Reaver Shot's just connecting big time. Larva's got reinforcements swinging in. Killing these Reavers would be everything, but ah, the Storm Reaver combo is too strong. <sighs> Snow not happy about losing that top right base, but happy about keeping this one. The Hiders are like, what do we focus here? We, I don't think... Oh, ow, we can't kill the Nexus. Reaver shots chase us away every time. Lurkers are still spining a little bit. This Archon's like, I am in no man's land. And that's it. Larva taps out. <laughs> and Snow is your winner. It's just uncrackable, man. It's just absolutely uncrackable when it is snow doing this. We're just looking at Reavers, a million Archons, enough High Templar, a couple Dragoons, a Zealot. Is there really no three Zealots? Five Zealots down here. All right, with three, two, three upgrades. Yep. So, like, congratulations. You could kill this, but you're not taking it, Larva. And you can try to kill this, but you're not killing it, he says. And just, man. Yeah, Snow played this just to perfection, man. To perfection. That was awesome. Whew. It is whew, 11 p.m. here, so I'm going to wrap it up. But, man, 
Yeah, I feel like I just we just kind of went through this whole thing together, right? Snow just knew I got to take these bases, cut the map in half, be cost efficient, which means I need the Reaver tech, I need the High Templar, I need Archons. The later the game goes on, the more value they have with the two shield upgrades, especially when there's Dark Swarm and Plague Out, right? These guys are the guys, the answer to that stuff. And the Reavers are just heroes. That's an 18 kill Reaver right there. This guy probably has over 20, if I had to guess, although he's building, so we can't tell. But uh, yeah, Larva just trying to get up this ramp, trying to kill this base. Couldn't do it, couldn't do this. Killed it twice, didn't matter. Just had no minerals left at all. He had a bunch of gas, but without minerals, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. So Snowman taking down Larva in an absolutely, absolutely impressive win there for the Protoss. So we want to slap this with an epic tag? I don't know. I think anytime maybe he drops kill your second to last source of income and you win anyway, that's pretty impressive stuff out of snow. You let me know in the comments. We'll talk about it. I read every comment anyone ever makes. 430,000 points of 371. 1,500 Zerg units produced. 400 Protoss units produced. And that is the kill death ratio that you want to see. This is a 4 to 1 kill death ratio, man. 63 to 5 buildings raised. Larva did a really good job taking down Protoss structures. And uh, seriously, I mean, how many bases died today for the Zerg? Zero. Zero hatcheries went down. A bunch of drones got storm dropped and reaver dropped. And an uh, evolution chamber died. A spawning pool and a spire died. And that's it. So, man, 106,000 resources spent for the Zerg. 94,000 spent for the Protoss. That is a 10,000 resource difference in 40 minutes. It's not really going to be enough. Just proportionally... Yeah, you can't split the map in half. I don't know. It's simple. <laughs> but it's also the reality, man. All right. That was amazing. That was great. That was a fantastic showing of how to play PvZ from snow. But what else do we expect? Like, what do we expect from these guys? Excellent stuff from Snow, excellent stuff from Larva, but Snow has a knows how to play PvZ. Although, did I cast... Who did I cast? It was Action against... Was it Snow that I cast? Or was there a different Protoss player last week on Troy? That weird map where you can like lock off bases and turn them into islands? It might have been Snow. Either way, those were great games. Go check those, those out if you like PvZ. But for today, that's going to be it from me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. If you like what you saw, what you heard today, you can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.